Play action. Cousins back. Floats it to the near side. Making the catch is Rudolph. Malcolm Jenkins stopped him after only a two-yard pickup. On this play, you get so much depth here to get underneath here. So we're playing basically just like a invert half, basically. Darby's the deep defender, and then I'm technically the flat defender. I got to hold off the seven, just like you would tell a, a, a squat corner, yep. and then make them check this down, and then you just got to run and get him down, try to mitigate the amount of yards he gets. Rudolph coming across the formation, and it's played extremely well by Malcolm Jenkins. What's your indicator that it's not run right here? So in my mind, this formation is only, the only types of runs I'm going to get with the tight end. He's off, but he's tight, direct, dive solid. And so if it, and if it is dive solid, that receiver is the one that's got to block me. And so I'm just feeling him, really. I'm looking inside, but I'm feeling him. Once he doesn't block me, I'm, I'm out. The way you really drive to get the depth, you can always come up. Mm -hmm. But once you take that depth, it takes that corner away. A lot of guys playing that position, they don't get that depth. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, the, that's the biggest thing. You got to get it as fast as you can. It's really about the angle. Like, I know I don't have to get, I don't have to touch this receiver to take away the throw. I just got to be able to get in the angle. You know, from, from a quarterback's perspective, I can guarantee you my pre-snap read, and with you in that position, I come on this fake, I got this old cut out here, it's like stealing. I mean, that's my, my, my thinking on well, that. that play action. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's not buzzing that thing. Right. He's not taking that, that, that old cut away. I mean, to me, that's just an incredible move to get that depth. But here you are again. Yeah, I just got there fast enough on this one. Got here with that, It's a, it's the same, same concept as, as the play we watched before. Yep. With this motion, that takes my run responsibilities now outside of this guy, so I can loosen up and get a head start on my drop. I'm gonna get my depth first. I just know I'm deep enough to take away the seven if he ran it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm really just looking at the quarterback. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm waiting for this check down because um, I want them to see that. They just see an open check down. It's like they can't help it. They want to okay. throw it out there. This is D.D. Westbrook. He's, got some, he's got some speed here. So the funny thing about this play is I'm actually supposed to be blitzing. Okay. Oh. I looked up and, and realized nobody was covering the third receiver. Yeah. If you see Razul Douglas right now, he's, he's running over. Yeah. Late. Right. And so... I'm trying to get him to come. They snap the ball, so I'm not, not going to blitz. I'll just cover him. Every team's got this route concept in where it's just two ends and then a seven by number three. Yeah. Bortles backs up, firing for the end zone incomplete. Great coverage by Malcolm Jenkins. So does Rasul come back to you and say, man, thank, thank you, thanks for oh, coming? of course. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> better. Yeah, of course. That's something that can happen. Yeah. Sometimes it's just it's just one of those things like you got to have guys that can problem solve on the field. So for just the people out there, Malcolm, like Tampa 2 is really a three deep coverage. Yeah, Tampa 2, you got two deep safeties. You got your Mike, who's technically a third. He's the middle of the field, you know, third defender. Mm -hmm. And then you got two underneath hook players and two corners. The mic is is kind of the, the wild card in it. You know, most teams will try to sit something down in front of him so he can he can be aggressive on that. But if it, they go vertical, he's got to be able to play both both ways. He steps up, firing for the end zone. Intercepted! Intercepted! Jenkins intercepted. He's across the twenty. We're backed up. I'm playing for them to go for the for the end zone because mm -hmm. they got to take that shot. It's a two by two formation, so I know okay if they run seams. I'm really it's just a break on the quarterback drill for me. I got to defend the seams on either side. So when you're backpedaling here, Malcolm, you're just reading Eli's eyes. I'm just looking at Eli the whole time, okay, and knowing that if he throws this in the middle of the field at all, that's where I'm going, and so I'm just tracking him. Were you surprised you threw it? No, no, I wasn't. I mean, because this little bit, I was. this little movement, <laughs> this little saying. movement right here, yeah. you know, where I'm, I'm coming back to this, this way, leads him to probably believe that, that, that he's getting that, that window open. He's probably looking to the right. That made you kind of s s yeah, shuffle a little bit. Yeah, something about his body. Yeah. Did, did you bait him a little bit on that play? Because it doesn't look like he tried to manipulate you. No, I mean, he didn't he, try to manipulate he, me. You at almost all. manipulated him. Right. That's what when I said. That moved, move, yeah, that movement yeah. right there gives him the, the idea that that's open backing up and being able to stay square just allowed me to go either way, which, you know, ended up in a big interception. Yeah. So here you are right here, free safety. Your general versatility here, Malcolm. This being a true zone, I'm, I'm really just all off the quarterback. Right, yeah. Right. Stay patient and go either left or right based off of where he's looking. 
This is a really good job defensively. They play a two deep zone this time, and Malcolm Jenkins, he hightails, gets to the football, and takes it back the other way. Yeah. 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 I never even got to the half. Yeah. Yeah. I think he thought I was going to go back to the post. I just, yeah. I like two yards outside So now I'm playing dime linebacker. I got this B gap technically versus the run, but anytime that, that tackle doesn't block the end, you know, something's up. So I'm just tracking him, and I know, all right, if he's run out there, it's, it's a screen. I'm trying to really beat these other linemen before they can get to me. And as soon as I see the ball, I break. Malcolm Jenkins knew exactly what the play was. And right now, I'm like, okay, we're in the dime package. I got the back. Um, and so in my mind, I'm, I'm locked in. And then late, Corey Graham says something to me. He's saying switch, but he's saying it to the wrong person. And so when he said it, I thought that meant, okay, well, you got the back. And I realized nobody's out here covering the back. So now I just try to run over there and make the, <laughs> make the tackle. You're like the eraser, man. You're covering up for all these guys' mistakes. Yeah, yeah and that's why I get to I'm like, Corey, don't talk to me. <laughs> Stop talking to me. Like, you're tripping me out. He's, he's telling me, I wasn't talking to you, I was telling somebody else. But it's like one of those things where, you know, yeah, you just got to feel, you know, you got to feel it. It's just one of those things like when, if you feel middle of the play, nobody's covering a guy, don't just not go over there because that's not your job. Yeah. This motion right here is just ID motion. They want to know if we're in man or man or not. And but with any motion comes communication. And like everybody's got to know, you know, what we're on. So Sanu going in motion, Sydney's running with him. Mm -hmm. That's a pre-snap indicator uh, for man coverage. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what, that's what they use it for. Yeah, right. we're actually not in man, but yeah. to the quarterback, it looks like man. Right. That's that's what they do, you know, to figure out to give the quarterback a, a, a snapshot on what coverage is coming. So here we are with Fitz. Larry, yeah, yeah. my guy. These are the type of guys I like to cover because he's big, like I'm big. He's not gonna do, he's not gonna out quick me or anything like that. I know where my help is. Behind you? Yep. Actually, I'm probably supposed to be inside leverage because we don't have a whole player, but I'm comfortable knowing that, okay, if he goes underneath and I can, I can slip him. But it's, again, here, Malcolm, it's your, you get your eyes back. Yep. To the quarterback here. Once you recognize the timing, you know, of, of the route, you know when the ball should be able to get there. So once he makes that break, I know, okay, the ball's coming. If it's gonna go to Larry, the ball's coming. So I gotta right. look at that at that break. And if it's not there, then I'll, I'll get back to him. But that's just a feel for the concept that we got and, and when the ball is supposed to you know, arrive. When you go back to the beginning here, Mal, yeah. what what are you looking at right here? Are you literally looking at the belt buff, buckle right here? Uh, so number? I, I, I look at um, their knees. Yeah, because like everybody, you know, always tell you, look at the belt buckle. Yeah. What happens is you go from the, the waist all the way up to their eyes. And then when you're looking at a receiver's eyes, trying to stay in front of them, that's that's bad news. So I'll look at like something small on their pants, whether it's a stain okay. or a stripe, because that doesn't move. Hmm. And so everything up here is, they're going to be doing all of that, but like that stuff doesn't move. So I keep my eyes down below. But aren't the legs like going in, like maybe not with Larry, like yeah. you're talking about, nah. but like some of these guys that can really, like juke at the stop. Their leg, the, the jukes aren't in the legs. It's, it's up top. The, okay. I mean, your legs, they might be staying in place, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna move. One of the things that you do really, really well on the, when you cover these tight ends is you will take an angle to undercut them mm -hmm. in the potential route. I mean, anytime you're in a slot or you're covering a tight end, somebody in the core, you gotta know where your help is. And so my help is deep right over the top of me. So I really don't have to worry about getting beat over the top. So anything that they run, I'm gonna try to undercut it. And so anytime they run this over, I wanna get to a spot where I can be right underneath it, where I know he's not climbing, and then you just play the ball from there. One thing you do that seems obvious to all defenders, but they don't do it, is you always seem to be able to find the quarterback. We give quarterbacks, I think, too much credit. <laughs> right? For what? <laughs> <laughs> we give them too much credit. We, we assume that every time as a defender, and we've been taught this since Little League, you always assume that the ball's going to be accurate and be there on time. So when you beat, you automatically just stare. You try to run up and play his hands. When watching the tape, like nine times out of ten, the ball's underthrown or it's not in the right spot, and you're like, damn, if I would have just turned around, it would have been an interception. So we work a lot on... Once you get to your spot, look for the ball and play the ball. If the ball's not there, then go back to covering your man. Right here is a little veteran move right there. Oh yeah, the little, like you, the little that's ground, a little old little corner yeah. trick right yeah. there. I mean, you got you got his hand, 
and but you know what you're doing right there. Like, yeah. It's subtle. For me, I'm looking at the ball and I want to make sure I know where he's at. And so he and he's trying to do the same thing. Like he wants to kind of keep that extension. So we were kind of playing that game. But yeah, I'm a I'm a tug that so I make sure I can get get to him. <laughs> here you are in the slot here. Yep. We're given the appearance of a man to man and in the slot motion. So yeah. I'm just right now actually a, a flat defender. When he goes across the motion here, are you saying anything like across, across to anybody? We're just saying bump, bump, bump. Bump. Okay, so, bump. so technically, if you, if you want to look at it, we're, we're a one gap defense. Yeah, so yeah. right now, my, my gap is outside of this second receiver. Once he motions in, technically, I'm now a B gap defender. Mm -hmm. I just play it from way out here. As soon as the tackle bypasses the defensive end, now I'm just a, I'm, I'm out, we call it rope -a basically, where I, I come back out and take contain. Wow, you're a B-gap defender from that position. From that that, position. That, that's, that's pretty amazing. It, it's almost like a linebacker shooting into the backfield to make this stop. Malcolm, normally a team would run that motion. You'd bump Take across you and get you out of there. Did you just have now your tape study, your film preparation? OK, you're expecting this play? Well, so uh, what we do, and we'll switch it up basically from game to game, is sometimes we'll run with that motion, sometimes we won't. Mm. Um, and so, because we, we learned that lesson the hard way playing the Rams <laughs> last year where every right. every snap, somebody's in motion, they're shifting, and it gets you running all over the place, and then the ball is like right down there. So we, what we did was settle it down. Sometimes we'll run with it, sometimes we won't. And that'll keep all our backers, you know, locked in. That'll keep our secondary all in the same gap. Quick pitch to Devontae Freeman, who's got a hole. He's at the 50, and he is cartwheeled right there. What amazes me is your open field tackling as well. I mean, you got Freeman out of the backfield, a lot of space, oh, and yeah. you just tackle him in the open field. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you just don't miss tackles. Well, Those are big that, plays. Yeah, the, the biggest thing, though, is uh, for this play is just really the angle. The, the way you approach ball carries is always going to be one of those things where I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get his outside leg. I'm not trying to get out in front of him. It's just pin that inside hip so he can't cut back. And then you just wrap up and, and... But a lot of guys aren't wrapping up, though, Malcolm. And I think there's a time and place for it. This is not one of them, especially, you know... Not with, that guy. Yeah, not that guy with backs that, you know, have good balance that won't just, uh, you know, fall to the ground. 